All right, so this is a video for my um, Farrier's Rasp uh, buoy. It's a, kind of a Masuda buoy. And uh, you can see it doesn't have the scrimshaw done yet that we'll get to see later. Uh, but otherwise, this is mostly a finished right side of the blade on the, on the rough side. Only one hammer mark on this side that I couldn't really get rid of uh, when grinding out because it just would have made things too thin. Here we have the original concept next to the original rasp. And the work after about an hour and a half or so all uh, bent over, uh, ready to be forged back out so it's straight, which is what we're doing here. Probably dub in the other audio, but basically you can see we're working the um, edge side to uh, avoid removing as much any, any more material than we have to in the final grind. <coughs> this ends up with a couple of hammer marks being left on this side of the blade as well. Uh, and there it is straight, uh, basically rough forged to shape and ready for grinding, which is what we'll do next. Groove, just the groove. Right, today what we're doing is actually what's called flat grind. So I'll be attempting to do a flat grind starting from essentially the angle here, which should be pointed out more or less the same on both sides. Uh, and that'll bring us back close to the spine with some of this uh, rasp detail still in the blade, or at least that's the plan. Um, we'll have a plunge cut area in here someplace, probably going through right about there, because this is going to be a musso and that's kind of a feature of those uh, types of buoys. It's actually a nice spot to put it because there's actually a spot right there that like it's already wanting to be that cut. Uh, I'm going to clean up back here probably first along the spine of the handle area just to get this line to be more even. And probably you can see it kind of rises back out here. I'll probably just grind that until it's essentially flat from this point back into the handle here somewhere. Probably should have just bent that over when I had it hot. Um, but it looked straight at the time. So that's <laughs> So here we're just profiling the tip a little. Now I've got a detailed video if you want to get into any of the uh, finer details on this part of it. Uh, obviously the tip gets hot. That's why I don't like grinding with gloves on, so I can tell when things are getting warm and it goes and gets dipped. I'm going to work on the drop point, trying to get it flat. Actually, a little bit concave. I like to see those a little bit concave. You need to see a pivot there just to try to keep that. Uh, surface as flat as possible. So it's easier to do that when you're at an angle on the blade, on the plate, on the uh, plate. Cleaning up the uh, spine here was a lot more trouble than I expected it to be. I really wish I'd uh, gotten that better on the forge. Alright, that's got the spine pretty much straight all the way up and down. Now, we're going back and forth, you can hear it as well.
All right, here's a pan of the rough ground <clears throat> blade itself. Again, rough side, you can see the hammer mark that was left. Here's the uh, initial concept work for the uh, guard and um, bolsters, front and rear. I expanded this a little bit to get more uh, bone. That's camel bone scale. So here's the uh, uh, guard milled down to match the front bolster and some new choil work done. Uh, these are the two, uh, well, bolsters on each set. Uh, ground to shape and the guard S uh, curved in the forge. The guards themselves off the blade, so the guard itself, the front, the uh, cross guard is a uh, single piece. <clears throat> Backing up a little bit before the guard was bent. Uh, everything pretty much uh, filed to fit. The scales are fit in this picture, and the blade lives in its. Uh, uh, quenched form. There's a shot of the spine showing the beveled uh, camel bone sc spacers or uh, scales. And there they are, final polished, ready for scrimshaw. Uh, there's the scrimshaw work on the uh, rough side, St. George and the Dragon. And the scrimshaw work on the uh, maker side. That's uh, my mark and explanation of the knife's purpose. And then we'll just do the same pan we had at the beginning, anybody who's interested. That's it. Ask any questions you might have in the comments below, and I'll be glad to uh, comment on them. Thank you.